some people suggested that I should kind of weigh in on this Elliot coaching slash sex scandal that seems to be going on right now and is a object of some kind of gossip. Before I start, you should realize that anything I say is actually hearsay, that I actually have not witnessed this firsthand. However, enough people have told me their experiences that they've had that I'm willing to relay those experiences is if you understand that you should view this with the skepticism that you should have as somebody who hasn't witnessed it, as you personally have not witnessed it yourself, nor have I. Okay. Apparently, Elliot, as a coach, is somebody who puts together effective programs for a lot of people, has been doing so for at least five or six years, and tends to act as a mentor and even as a friend for these people that he has relationships with. And all that on that level is fine. However, <clears throat> and this is where it gets a little strange, Apparently, at the same time that he's mentoring these people and coaching these people, he's also creating an environment or a context where there's a lot of sexual information going back and forth between them, which, again, is kind of okay. Now, in addition to that, he seems to, where possible and where he has that level of connection or rapport with these people, is slowly over time he seems to build a relationship where he can ask them for risque pictures of themselves. Let's face it, sexual pictures, sexually explicit pictures. And not just that, but also sexually explicit pictures of the people they might have access to also. And he seems to do that through a combination of, I guess you would say, manipulative authority as well as using pictures he gets from other people to send to, I guess, different people that haven't given him something yet and, and trying to create a context that this is okay in, an environment that this is a very natural thing. And as a result, over the years, he's acquired quite a collection, in my understanding, of pictures and material from a great many people. Um, and he recruits these people, one, through finding people that he likes, I guess, their look on Instagram or wherever and interested in sliding into those DMs and saying things like, oh my God, I could improve your form or your strength or your whatever, you look so good, and somehow building their trust there and coaching them or mentoring. Or other people who have actually gone to him directly because they heard about him because he coached various people in the fitness community that they were aware of, which gave him some kind of status. And also my understanding, and I'd never really quite out of this myself because it's not my tendencies is that people would actually want to seek him out just because he coached somebody else which is just strange to me but that's fine okay now apparently this is going on for a number of years and in successive generations where maybe one group that had been doing this earlier said you know what i don't want to play with elliot anymore i don't want to have anything to do with him because i've realized that perhaps he is not my friend and they've been replaced by other people coming along because they're, they, they're younger, they don't know, and he's gained more clients that way. Now, all this sounds all well and good for a moment, except for the fact that when we turn a circle, or excuse me, take a left turn and go, a lot of these people are underage. And it's absolutely not only inappropriate, but illegal to solicit sexually explicit material or sexually explicit pictures from anybody underage. And for those of you that don't know this, and you should, if you're under the age of 18 and you take a picture of yourself in a sexually explicit situation or maybe without your clothes on or something like that, it's actually illegal. And to send that out is not only illegal, but can get the other person in trouble too. And to receive it from somebody else is still illegal. So just be very, very careful. Actually, don't, even very, don't even be very careful there. Just don't do it. Now, a lot of times in those kind of particular cases, there are specific laws that apply only to people that are teenagers, that are underage in that category, not adults, obviously. And there's a little bit of leeway depending on the prosecutor. But if somebody wants to make an example of you, they can really, really mess you up for years if they decide to like press charges to the limit of the law. So just be aware of that. It's not a joke. Okay. So you have this thing going on behind the scenes of someone like Elliot, this coach, basically acquiring an enormous amount of people out there that he's mentoring and basically feeling out each one of them to seeing how far he can push their relationship to get those kind of pictures. In the meantime, not only does he do that, 
create this relationship, have these conversations, become mentoring. But he also sends gifts out, gives out money, flies people places, and all these kind of things that these people accept, I guess, because to them it's like, wow, free goods, free candy, free money, free whatever. Now, again, this is all kind of a a weird giant thing and apparently it's kind of big so you know if you had a situation where you had a coach being somewhat exploitive of one person or not even exploitive but just they had a weird relationship that you couldn't quantify you might sit there and go yeah I guess people are people people when somebody tries that with dozens of people scores of people perhaps even over a hundred people now you have a predatory type activity or at least somebody with a problem and I remember talking to one of the people in these kind of groups, and they were really, really flabbergasted because they didn't know what – they didn't understand how somebody could be so nice to them and be acting a mentoring role and help them solve their problems, but at the same time ask from them these, these pictures or these things and then distribute those things to other people. Okay. And my answer in a situation like that is people are extremely complicated. Somebody could be a good – parent and a good worker, do you mean? But like a terrible friend or somebody and or something like that. Somebody could be a mobster and be a good family person and still commit a lot of crimes. Like people are complex in what they do. So you can sit there and go, well, maybe this guy isn't a complete sociopath. He just has some issues and some problems that manifest themselves in this way that we're talking about, which is not only unethical and inappropriate, but also illegal and predatory. Okay. In my opinion. All right. So you look at that and you go, well, maybe I should make excuses. And the answer to that is no. It doesn't make a difference in some ways if the person is good in these following categories, if the person is absolutely terrible or willing to hurt you in another category. And my understanding is in this situation with this person, he would be a mentor. He would be a friend. He would be somebody who would help you solve your problems, except when it came to getting this kind of material, in which case all bets were off, and anything he used or got from you was fair game if he could use it to acquire more of that stuff. So if he could become friends with one of your friends and use information that he had about you against you to get stuff from them, that's what he would do. And one of the, and it seems like the, some of the levels of betrayal that I'm seeing and people are the most horrified about is that they thought that they had this one-on-one -on -one relationship with this guy of a, what I would consider to be a very dubious nature, but you know, it's not necessarily my place to judge. But then that person would then use that information or use those pictures or use that material against them in a different way to get more stuff from other people to say, hey, it's okay because I got it from them. And my understanding is that it was extremely prevalent in the way that he did these kind of things. So I hope we have a kind of a background. Now, apparently this has been going on behind the scenes for years. So the question would be, how could it never come out? And I hear people asking this all the time now. Like, why didn't these people or anybody involved this kind of step forward and say something? Well, you know, it's kind of hard to say for sure because obviously we can't crawl inside their head. But I would imagine just on the top of my head now, who would want to admit to something that embarrassing? I mean, if I was, first of all, doing really questionable things, I wouldn't want to talk about it. And if I was doing really questionable things where I was being manipulated, that's even worse. And bear with me. If I was doing really questionable things because I was manipulated and then the person was taking advantage of that later, I would be so humiliated and maybe that I didn't want to present that to anybody else. I mean, we are, we do have egos. And also on top of that, maybe that person still has stuff that they could have put out there that hadn't seen the light of day yet. Maybe I don't want to do, you know, I don't want to deal with that now. You know, and that, that, that becomes a, that's something I can just think of in my head that people would do if you don't want to get into some kind of sophisticated, weird psychology about it. I mean, just the embarrassment alone of that kind of exposure would be enough to keep most people quiet over the years. Now, my understanding now is that the Arnold, some people that weren't directly involved in this situation either had just suddenly became aware of it or suddenly became aware enough or had now the mental imperative that they wanted to go do something about it and then therefore put it out in social media. And now we are here where all this information has come forward and everybody's like, wow, I thought I was this guy's special friend myself. And it turns out that he was distributing or playing or doing this entire network of weird stuff that involved underage and illegal activities on a level that's really, really, really big if you think about it. I mean, 20, 30, 40, 50 people more I mean, that, that's kind of a really, really big thing. Um, 
Okay, let's let me let me let me take another step into a different chapter since you have the basic idea of what we're talking about. You can always you know ask me any questions in the comments, and I'll answer to the best of my knowledge anyway. Um, to me, it's kind of inconceivable that somebody randomly would ask you for really really risque pictures. I, I would wonder to myself, like, what were you thinking as as as, as a as a male who I'm assuming most of these guys actually aren't you know homosexual to send these pictures to another man like that. Okay, I think that's not a reason, unreasonable question to ask. However, it's not really a fair question to ask because he's establishing a relationship and over time he's picking the kind of people that he can kind of create that manipulation with and he's stepping back from the kind of people that won't respond that way. So maybe if he meets, a, if he coaches 30 people, maybe 10 or 15 of them will respond the way he wants to respond and he makes sure they're younger impressionable and let's face it if he's following them on if he's finding them on instagram where they're scantily clad to begin with maybe they're a bit exhibitionist too so maybe it's not as hard to persuade them to do certain things as it would be to somebody who's not into fitness at all that doesn't take their shirt off in public that doesn't think that walking around in very little little clothing is just the way to go all the time especially for guys okay um and you would probably think to yourself oh my god wouldn't somebody just say no but if people really had that ability just to say no to their friends all the time, as we think they would, then nobody would try drugs, nobody would try alcohol, nobody would get involved with crimes for their friends, nobody would cheat, nobody would do any kind of thing. So we know there's all kinds of aberrant behaviors that people do because of their friends groups that we would sit there and go, well, why do they do it looking out from the outside? And I know that I have thought that myself and said that to other people, and they said, look, it didn't happen that way. It was a slow evolutionary process over time involving the mentorship, the friendship, the slowly pushing, the slowly needling at their egos, the slowly softening their self-esteem, at the same time providing gifts and things like that, that they accepted freely, but still led to a relationship and led to a downside when they were willing to do things that I would assume they wouldn't be willing to do if somebody just walked up to them out of nowhere and said, hey, could you provide me with this kind of material? Now, let's get back to the fact that no matter what we think about this kind of weird thing and what kind of relationships they might have had, you got to draw a line somewhere, and this stuff is illegal. You cannot solicit material like that from an underage person. If everybody over here was just 18, he would be a scumbag, in my opinion. He would be a scumbag, but he could do that. If in a situation like this where they're all under 18, then assuming these allegations are true, did I mention that? Assuming these allegations are true, then not only is he predatory, but he's a lawbreaker, and that's something that has to be Address and I don't know if people actually realize that when they're looking at this problem. This is extremely serious in that way. I mean, this is like something that can involve authorities, you know, not something that's going to be like, hey, don't do that anymore. Now, one other thing I want to cover really quickly because I'm kind of rambling about this because it's five o'clock in the morning and I'm really, really tired and I'm kind of buzzed from the pre workout that I took earlier. And I've been told by multiple people multiple times in different situations that if they had had, if they had done this stuff before, excuse me, now that they've done this stuff, they know how to answer questions and how to avoid situations in the future because they had the previous experience. So they would sit there and tell me, you know, James, if I had ever been exposed to this kind of predator or this kind of person before that, I wouldn't myself have responded that way, but I just didn't know, and it just, I got, got sucked into it, and I was young, and I was inexperienced, and, you know, now that I know better, I know not to do these things, but I didn't know that, and, and that's extremely understandable, because you think to yourself, from hindsight, and from the outside, well, wow, look, this guy's obviously, something's twisted and wrong with him, but from the inside, as things evolve, it's not so apparent, you know, how can you tell somebody is really your friend, versus somebody who wants to do something <laughs> really bad for you, if you had, like, a good friend of yours for the last three years, that had been totally just cool to you and all of a sudden just took all your secrets and ran with them and told everybody else you'd be like oh my god and it would nece necessarily be any kind of clue and I think all of us in the past have had friends that betrayed us have not kept confidences have said bad things about us have maybe gotten us involved in things we don't want us to get involved with or gotten somebody else involved in something they didn't want to get involved with I've gone after your girlfriend or boyfriend or something where you were like oh my god how could this person who seemed like my friend be this loyal and a lot of times, disloyal, by the way, I said not loyal, this, disloyal. And a lot of times there's just no clue. You just have to go through life and you got to go, okay, we're moving in this direction. This person is acting kindly towards me. This person is being my friend or my mentor or whatever. 
And as long as they're moving in that direction, everything's fine. When they take a left turn into the Twilight Zone, that's when you know you need to back off. And you need to mentally prepare yourself in advance for that left turn. If it never happens, you've got a friend. If one day, I don't care if it's a day later, a month later, 10 years later, when the guy takes a left turn and goes, hey, I need you to send naked pictures of your mom, that's a red flag. That's a sit there and sing where you go, no, wait a second. That doesn't seem like a great idea. Oh, I need you to drive this car someplace so I'm going to commit a crime. No, these aren't great ideas. But these are things that happen to people because we have a sincere desire to trust and please and be helpful and agreeable to people that we like. It's an evolutionary trait because we're social animals. Okay? You just have to be aware of not wanting to put yourself in situations you can get yourself in trouble. So, just for fun, <clears throat> raise your hand if you're one of the people that all your friends go to and ask questions from. I'm one of those people. There's probably like one of every three people on this video right now watching this that are the people that people come to for advice. So, one of the things I always get asked a lot of times is, how should I phrase something? How should I do something? Now, in this situation, I find personally that most people don't do well with direct confrontation where they have to say no to somebody who's a friend of theirs who's putting some kind of social pressure on them. They can't just go, no, which is what you should do, right? But we're not really built that way. So here's a couple responses I let you write down in your mental index cards that you can use if you need a little bit of space. So imagine somebody asks you any question, like pass me the pudding. I don't care what it is, but if you can do some mental rehearsal, the same things you would do for athletics or business or whatever, and rehearse in your mind what you would say, you can create an artificial experience because your brain can't differentiate between what you imagine and what's real. So if you imagine things that you want to do in responses, you can actually respond as if you had that previous experience. So if you get a request for something and you're not sure, here's an easy way to do it. You know what? I'm not sure about that. Let me think about it. Now, they're going to keep pressuring you. So what you do then is you sit there and say, you know what? The more you ask me about it, the less likely I am to do it. And honestly, if you ask me right now, I'm going to say no. Do you want to ask me right now? You know, and don't be afraid to be a little bit firm because people respond to that. But you want to, be, you want to put them in a position where they've either got to force you or back off. Because I guarantee you, if somebody tries to force you, they're almost, you're almost always going to respond in a negative way because you don't want to be pushed around either, right? So... Another thing you can do, too, is if that person starts pushing you later, is you can sit there and memorize a response like, um, you know, I really value our friendship. I really like, I like the fact that we hang out together. I like the fact that, you know, we, we seem to have a good time. I just don't understand why you're trying to make me feel uncomfortable by what you're asking me. Why would you do that? You know, these are kind of questions that are hard for people to answer. And also, when you ask questions, you have a certain degree of power in a conversation. Why are you trying to make me feel so uncomfortable? Now they've got to justify themselves to you. Why are you asking me for, for, for pictures of myself when I don't want to give them to you? What is that person going to say then? You know, and those are the kind of responses you want to start memorizing for yourself so that you have time. No, you know what? I don't think I want to do that right now. I'll think about it for later. Well, uh, well why don't you do it? You know what? Now I really don't want to do it. You know what? I might have thought about doing it if you hadn't kept asking me. In fact, the fact that you keep asking me is the reason why I don't want to do it. Do you want to ask me some more? You know, start thinking in responses like that or things that you can say. Use it in forms of questions that you can do, that you can put the person that's trying to put you on the defensive and manipulate you back into their own place. Now, don't do this on your parents if you have parents because, hey, they have power over you. And probably don't do it to your boss either because that's a good way to get fired. But anyway, um, this is getting kind of long, and I can talk about these kind of verbal judo things all day long. So in the meantime, I hope I answered most of your questions about the Elliot situation. I'm about to put a second video, which will be an interview with this guy named Steve that actually had trained with Elliot as his coach. And I guess that's all. In the meantime, have a really, really good night. I'll talk to you later.